sorry. Uh, I am a pass out from Sir JJ Institute of Applied Art. I passed out in the year 2010, and my final year project was on Devanagari Latin ambigrams. That was the first time I had heard of the term ambigrams, and I was so fascinated with it, I decided I want to take it up as my project. Since then, I've come a long way, but there's still a lot to go. Um, I am, before I move on to the combination ambigrams of Devanagari in Latin, I would first like to show you some ambigrams which are only in Latin and some which are only in Devanagari. What you see on screen here, I am hoping you would have read it by now, is an ambigram of the word typography. It is a rotational ambigram, a 180 degree one, wherein you can read the word, the unit, the typographic unit, as the word typography both ways. Even if you rotate the entire thing, it still reads as typography. I would now explain what an ambigram actually is. Uh, the ambigrams as a concept have been there for quite a while now, I guess, about a century now. But the term ambigram has been given by Mr. Douglas Hofstadter. He calls an ambigram a calligraphic design that manages to squeeze two different readings into the same set of curves. That is, the shape of the letter forms remains the same, but there are the one, one shape will can be spelled out as two different letter forms in two different orientations. Now, these orientations can be different, they can be rotational, so those are the types. Depending on what is the second point of reading, the types are classified. So one is rotational, where uh, it can either be 180 degree rotational, the one that you saw, the typography one, or uh, 90 degree rotation, where you just rotate the entire unit 90 degrees and you can read a different word vertically. That is quite common in Chinese, because Chinese is written vertically, so dual script ambigrams of Latin and Chinese are often done that way. Next one is mirror, where uh, the unit is reflected in a mirror and you can see either the same word or another word. Next is figure ground, where uh, you have the positive spaces of the letter forms saying one, uh, spelling out as one word and the negative spaces work as another. Uh, and the last one is perceptual shift. Here, as opposed to figure ground, you will have the positive spaces themselves spelling out two different words just by perceiving them differently. Ambigrams are also known often as vertical palindromes and uh, inversions, and there are several other names given by different people. We shall now move on to the actual artworks. Yeah, this is again a 180 degree rotational ambigram of the word ambigram itself. Uh, what we need to note here is uh, this one and the typography one are both ambigrams where uh, they're single uh, words. They're not two words and two different orientations. Either orientation is the same word. So while designing an ambigram like that, what you actually do is you're only designing half of it. Because half of the, uh, you're designing the first half to look like the second half from the other orientation. So you just repeat the second, rotate it and repeat it again, you have the ambigram ready. This one, uh, the ones that I'm showing right now are all Latin. Uh, this one is a mirror ambigram. The one on the left hand side, you can read it as L-E-F-T, left. You uh, mirror the entire thing that is horizontally reflected. You read it as right, R-I-G-H-T. What is important about ambigrams is that for them to be legible, which is the most difficult thing to do. The point here is for the reader also to expect that it may not be as readable as plain text. It is, however nice an ambigram is, it is going to be a bit complicated because at the end of the day, it is like combining two letters in one shape. So it ends up getting complicated anyway. So it's a challenge to make it as readable as possible. Some work, some don't, or, the, or it's subjective. Uh, certain ambigram, one person may be able to read it quite quickly. Somebody else will be like, what is this? I cannot read it at all. This one is a figure ground ambigram, where uh, the, it, it's an interplay of the positive and the negative spaces. The dark letters read as black, B-L-A-C-K, and uh, the text in white, the counter spaces, make a W-H-I-T-E white. The next one is, yeah, this is a perceptual shift ambigram. Uh, it may work if you can read one word, close your eyes and look at it once again, and then you can read the other word maybe. 
I had created a series of these for, uh, they were combinations of different currencies. This one is dollar and pound. The pound is all caps. The dollar is the D is uppercase, the rest is lowercase. Thank you. Okay, the, after exploring the Latin ones, which are relatively common in the sense that people have been doing them for a while. Uh, during I was, while I was doing my project, my guide, Professor Seinecker, he suggested why not try ambigrams in an Indian script, which is when I first explored an ambigram entirely in Devanagari. But what I realized was Devanagari, the characters being very complex, Making two letters fit in one is does not really become legible. It's very difficult to do that. There's still one example that I've got here, especially with the three tire structure. When you have the shiro rekha and then you have stuff going on top of it, stuff going below it, it's it becomes very complicated. There's still one. This is a relatively simple. It is Bharat. It's only a three letter one and thank you. This is Bharat. This is the only uh, single Devanagari one that I have. This is again same word reading from both the sides. I would now move on to the combination ambigrams. Uh, it is important to note here that these combination ambigrams are termed by scriptural and not bilingual because it is a play of the script. It is the letter form, the shape which you are modifying and it has got absolutely nothing with, with the language that you are using it in. It can be one language rendered in two different scripts like a transliteration of it or something. So it's very important to realize that it is the script and not the language at all. In the combination ambigrams what happens is you have to maintain identities of both the scripts which is difficult uh, especially with Devanagari Latin where you have uh, a shiro rekha in Devanagari it, it sort of becomes like an underline to the Latin one in a rotational ambigram so the thing is uh, in combination ambigrams it is very essential for the audience to know to expect a certain thing if you for instance if you have somebody who is expecting a devanagari and who reads who sees an a latin ambigram most probably he will not be able to read it and vice versa uh, for example like uh, if there is a signage which is which has two scripts devanagari and latin I would immediately read the Latin one, whereas the Devanagari is always there, but I'm just habitual to reading Latin, so I read Latin. Whereas my mother would uh, read the uh, Devanagari one first. So what is expected, what the reader is expecting out of it, what script he is familiar with plays a very important role because at the end of the day, you are reading the word as a whole. If you, if you read it letter by letter, it is possible that you may not understand the ambigram at all. Only if you read the word as a whole, uh, with respect to word, the flow of the letter forms, the proportions that are maintained, only then you can read it. Uh, this is the very first uh, combination thing that I did, that is my name. This one is in Latin, P -A -L -L -A -V. The You rotate this 180 degrees and you get this, which is a Devanagari of my own name again. Thank you. So this one, and I've just combined the two slides to give an explanation of how exactly it looks together. Now we go to the next one. Yeah, this is a mirror ambigram of, again, two scripts. The left one reads as Devanagari, Devanagari in the script Devanagari. Whereas the right side one is D-E-V-N-A-G-R-I, that is Devna Latin. Uh, in this case, uh, I could, uh, you can see that the Shirorekha is not there at all, which does lead to a confusion sometimes. Like I was told by someone that, how do you say, it, it looks like Gujarati because it does not have this, but uh, I don't know. And if, if put in the Latin one, it, it's just simply, you cannot read the Latin at all, so you cannot really help this. Yeah, this is the last ambigram that I'm showing you. 
it is the proverb tit for tat in english this is part of the project that i had done in final year it was a series of um, uh, rotational uh, ambigrams of two scripts wherein uh, they were all proverbs one one in english and the corresponding one in devnagari the the marathi version of it so this one is uh, tit for tat and you rotate the entire thing 180 degrees to get zashas tase again this is both together what i would also like to share with these ambigrams is the creation process i do not know if i will be able to articulate exactly what i do but i would still like to generally tell you the whole process that i follow now the first thing is to understand what are the different types in which you can write the basic letter form like for example in devnagari you you can write the two ways of writing the letter l it can be with it can be like this or with the dandi but uh, you need to write simply simply put down on paper the words in your own handwriting and to just understand the feel of the letters to understand how the flow goes and to understand what is the component of that letter form that give, that is actually giving it its identity which is when you know which is the part that you can actually modify what is it that you can delete to still retain the identity for example in the uh, latin a uh, upper case even if you remove the horizontal bar it does not matter you can still read it as a so it is here that you know what is the part that you can change and tweak so once you write that you form the core skeleton by trying out combinations you have to do a one to one mapping of which letter go maps with which letter uh, whatever if it's the same letter you have to make it if it's like a single word ambigram you have to do the same letter so you map those words and just just doodle and try combinations of those words with those letters so once the core structure is formed you can then compose the word together to see if it works as a word you may have to tweak it again to make it work as a word because once the letters come in line the letters may work individually but once they come together as a word you may have to change it a bit to to give it a togetherness or a composed feeling and then finally you add flesh to this skeleton according to whatever script you are using uh, in order to maintain the identity of that particular script for basically recognizing that this is this script so i have some sketches of some of this one that it for that one uh, the first one which is basic letter forms is just trying randomly trying out how to write how you can write without absolutely any thought here you can even take references from the you can make other people write and then you 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 understand that a, pers a certain person may write a letter differently you you never thought of writing it like that but it, you can still read it either way so you basically explore that then you do the one to one mapping where you decide what goes with what which letter can work you when you're looking at it you can sort of visualize like when i was doing this i could uh, imagine that the last t that one in the tat could be combined with the last uh, with the first letter of the shastra se the j is you can you can feel it you that is going to happen and forming the skeleton that is the most important step you can explore how much ever in this there is absolutely no end to this you can keep exploring and keep thinking it does not work it works whatever the problem that happens here is as an ambigram artist when you are designing the ambigram you have seen it so many times you can always read it there is never a case when you think oh you this is this is eligible you think oh this is perfect it works you show it to somebody and the person is like oh, what is this i cannot read a single letter out of this and you're like but it's so clear it's you've spent so much time on it you can always read it like i can always read all my ambigrams even when they are in the skeleton structure and in spite of putting the flesh people are like i cannot read this so feedback is a very very important thing here because at the end of the day people have to read it what's the point if only you can read it so you then the explore how much ever you can with the structure 
then what i used to do i i used to have heaps of sheets with just stuff like that the third one the forming the skeleton with just random things here and there my mother used to look at it and say what are you doing i mean it just looks like random wriggles done all over the page then you pick from those wriggles which one works which doesn't work with minor tweaks you can it's like magic with a simple teeny weeny thing here and there you can read suddenly read a letter so explore in that pick out what works then compose it as a word see if you it actually works when it comes together as well sometimes there are issues with spaces like you need to have spaces between the two words if there isn't then you obviously cannot make out the word so there there may be a space required like in this one too rashas to say are two words and tit for tat are three words so you need to adjust that accordingly so that you can re- see the three words in latin but you can still see only two words in devanagari so this is the final stage this is so in this one you can see uh, the arranging is done in a single line whereas here i have changed it for the zashas to go up and the say to go down so this is the final stage of it this is the linear the first one composing the words is a linear thing and then that one is the final thing where i have added the flesh to it and uh, that's it uh, that is the final thing where you can now digitalize the ambigram as per you want you can make changes while you are digitalizing it also color plays a very important role there has to be good contrast or else you can't read the basic typography sensibility has to be there in each of the ambigram that's about it thank you i would also i want to give all all thanks to